Hi, this is Gali Gofarp. Thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about amalgam fillings um, in our teeth, those silvery fillings, and what we should be doing about them, if anything. So for over a hundred years, dental amalgam has been extensively used in the treatment of dental caries. Dental amalgam consists of a metal mixture of silver, copper, tin, and zinc combined with mercury, the heavy metal. Already in uh, 1843, the American Society of Dental Surgeons declared the use of amalgam as malpractice because of the fear of mercury poisoning. But the, um, the ASDS, as it was called, the American Society of Dental Surgeons, um, forced all of its members to sign a pledge to abstain from using these mercury fillings. Because of its stark stance against amalgam, the membership in the ASDS declined and the loss of members caused the organization to break up in 1856. Several years later, the American Dental Association was founded, allowing the use of amalgam, so the product was back in business, even though it was known to harm health. Now, in 2003, the World Health Organization reported that dental amalgam is a potent source of exposure to the uh, element mercury. And in 2005, the uh, World Health Organization reported that mercury has no thre threshold below which side effects do not appear. People with amalgam fillings have higher mercury concentrations in their blood, urine, and body organs compared to those without any amalgam fillings. Mercury is released from the amalgam when the filling is put in as well as when it is removed. But also mercury dissipates continuously while the amalgam is in our teeth. Metallic mercury in amalgam fillings releases mercury vapor, which is absorbed into the mouth and the nose tissues, mainly um, when we are chewing, like chewing gum. Um, if you chew gum for five minutes and you have amalgam fillings, it increases the release of mercury vapor by a threefold. Drinking hot drinks, eating grains um, when you have to really chew hard, brushing your teeth, using uh, tooth whiteners, and grinding your teeth also releases mercury vapor from amalgam fillings. The level of ongoing mercury exposure increases following the number of fillings found in your mouth. The daily absorption of mercury from amalgam um, restoration is estimated to be between 1 and 27 micrograms of mercury per day. As of this year, 2022, amalgam is restricted or completely banned from dental fillings in Scandinavia, Austria, Canada, Estonia, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, um, Sweden, and Switzerland and even small amounts of mercury can disrupt cell functions, especially in the brain. Mercury increases glutamate release and disrupts calcium balance in neurons, um, brain cells. Ongoing exposure to mercury is associated with many diseases, including multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, some studies indicate that mercury is absorbed, especially in motor nerve cells in the spinal cord, which is part of the ALS disease. Mercury also inhibits progesterone production in the ovaries. A significant decrease in progesterone levels is common in women who have had 10 or more amalgam fillings. Mercury also harms the functioning of the immune system. It harms the activity of the macrophages and the neutrophils and prevents secretion of cytokines. Now, because mercury damages the function of white blood cells, it exposes the body to infections and infectious diseases. Mercury causes damage to the cells of the body by several mechanisms. Number one, it significantly increases the production of free radicals in the cells. Number two, it increases the oxidation of lipids in the cell membranes. All of our cell membranes have lipids in them and they oxidize um, because mercury attaches to the antioxidants, um, glutathione and superoxide dismutase. Um, also, mercury interferes with protein production. So what should you do if you have amalgam fillings? Well, studies show that replacing amalgam fillings with healthier fillings leads to reduced levels of mercury in the blood um, and the urine. Now, some people are more sensitive to mercury from dental uh, amalgam and benefit from reduced exposure. 
the decision criteria was ma uh, that is made for dentists um, to help patients decide what to do and what is in their best interest includes the age of the filling. Um, most of us really have old amalgam fillings because they were used more often um, 20 to 30 years ago. Also the imperfections at the margin of the filling, especially fillings with marginal cracks and visible secondary caries in the teeth as well as pain in the, in the teeth. So most dentists do not recommend that amalgam fillings be removed only due to a patient's desire if none of these criteria are met. Um, however, it is your choice. And considering that it takes about 10 to 15 years to clear half of the amount of mercury um, that accumulates in the brain, I recommend, personally, this is my recommendation, and this is what I did as well, uh, removing your amalgam fillings if you are healthy and under 70 years of age. Uh, removing amalgam fillings should only be done with required safety measures. Otherwise, the removal may cause more harm than good to both you um, and the treating staff who are exposed to the toxic fumes. Therefore, amalgam fillings should be removed by a specialized dentists who know the protocol and have the necessary equipment to avoid further harm. Studies show an observed reduction in subjective health complaints after the replacement of amalgam fillings. But just make sure that your replacement fillings do not have bisphenol A, do not have BPA. Now, one study showed that after the removal of amalgam fillings, there were significant reductions in oral and general health, um, also at a three-year follow-up. There was a significant decrease in mercury concentration in the blood and urine um, following the removal of amalgam fillings. And after the removal of these fillings, the mercury blood concentration was reduced to half the concentration before the removal. The mean concentration in the urine um, was reduced to about one fourth of the levels before the removal, which is a major significant um, um, change. In this study, um, some of the participants who had amalgam fillings um, um, had their re uh, fillings removed, experienced in the beginning transient health complaints um, in connection with the removal of the, the fillings, and these included uh, pain, uh, gastric um, issues, joint and muscle pain, uh, sometimes sore um, ulcers in the mouth, a sore throat, dizziness, and increased heart rate. Um, some of them also had diarrhea and depression um, and burning sensations in the face, as well as increased blood pressure and swollen lymph, lymph nodes around the neck. Um, now these complaints disappeared in less than two weeks. In the treatment group, the oral and general health complaints were significantly reduced three years after the complete replacement of amalgam fillings. People believe in amalgam replacement as an effective treatment. Therefore, some patients choose to have all of their amalgam fillings because they are concerned about the possible adverse effects of mercury being released from their fillings into their body. And this reduction in worry is in of itself uh, a factor that may have influenced some of the results, but we can still see the lowered blood and urine concentration of mercury. So. Um, also, the improvement in health status may be, um, since mercury also um, causes zinc and other nutrient deficiencies, and dietary zinc is essential for mercury elimination, but not only that, it's very important for our immune health. It is important to know that mercury does not circulate freely in the body, but must be bound to a molecule um, that binds to a metal, um, and the preferred metal for mercury is sulfur in the form of a thiol and the thiols in your body are used in antioxidant enzymes such as glutathione um, so mercury binds the the metal and prevents the enzymes um, antioxidant activity mercury also clings to cell membranes which can lead to their damage therefore i recommend you consider removing your amalgam fillings the procedure is often easy and for most people it should take no more than half an hour to have the amalgam fillings replaced with the bpa free white fillings i recommend taking uh, 10 milligram of zinc sulfate supplements three times a week 
during the fortnight after removal of the fillings. I recommend also taking 10 milligrams of zinc sulfate supplements three times a week if you decide to keep your amalgam fillings just so that you can, it will, the zinc will help remove the mercury from the body. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please also subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content and visit my website, thegorillodiet.com to help you move your health and wellness to a better place for you. Thank you very much for joining.